Hi, I'm Charlotte Frassa, a second year computational neuroscience PhD student at the Donders Institute in the Netherlands. And today I want to talk to you about a few neuroscience books that I've read over the last few weeks, such that I hopefully can inspire you for your to be read list and give you some inspiration for the next book to read. So let's dive straight into it. So the first book is The Nocturnal Brain. And did I pick this book for its cover? Maybe, but it's a really beautiful cover. So it's The Nightmare Neuroscience science and the secret world of sleep by Guy Leisinger. Leisinger. This book was so fun. If you're a fan of Oliver Sacks and his way of writing, I think you really enjoy this book. So Guy Leisinger is this psychiatrist and he works with sleeping disorders or at the Sleep Institute. So he talks about different patients that he had over the years and really talks about their experience. And then alongside that, he kind of explains where the disorders come from or what the current Current theories are surrounding certain sleep disorders and I think this is a really intuitive and nice way to explain neuroscience so you take a case of a certain patient and really walk people through what their problems are and how they experience this because I think in modern neuroscience we sometimes leave out the subjective experience of the patient and everything has to be very scientific and very objective but in the end we need to remind ourselves that we are working patients that have real troubles and subjective experiences to me are even more important than the objective measurements we take of the people. So in general I find it really interesting that there's a super strong link between sleeping disorders and certain psychiatric disorders. We see it in the lab as well that usually when people get depressed before their depression onset they already show troubles in their sleeping patterns and it isn't exactly clear which way it works. Is it because you are depressed that you don't sleep enough or is it because you don't sleep enough that you get depressed? We now think that it's kind of both ways most likely and also for example in schizophrenia it's very common that before an onset of a psychotic episode people are usually not sleeping for a really long time and you can for example see this really well in the movie The Machinist if you haven't watched it watch it it's so good so in The Machinist Trevor an insomaniac operator who has not slept for months experiences unusual occurrences at home and work a strange man follows him everywhere but no one else seems to notice him so this movie I enjoyed a lot it really takes you to this very creepy currents of a man slowly going towards insanity and he also talks about another syndrome in his book the sleeping beauty syndrome which I found really interesting I never heard of it before so the official name is the Kleine Levin syndrome also called the sleeping beauty syndrome and it's a rare disorder predominantly reported in adolescent males characterized by recurrent episodes of hypersomnia. So yeah, I think this in general is a really fun book to read. I won't go over all the patients, but just to give you an idea. So he has In the Still of the Night, Disney Was Right, Rumblings, The Sleep Talking Bus Driver, Weak With Laughter, Buzzing Bees. So all of these are about different sleeping disorders and I think you can learn a lot. So yeah, I recommend on this one. Then the second book I re read was by Lisa Feldman Barrett. Also discover so beautiful. But anyways, um, it's called Lessons About the Brain or Seven and a Half Lessons About the Brain. And I mostly picked up this book because her previous book I enjoyed a lot. It's called How Emotions Are Made. And for me, this was a really interesting book about a lot of topics that I personally haven't researched that much. So I found it really interesting to read. But I have to say this book was a little bit different. It's a lot more focused on people that don't study neuroscience or haven't don't have any experience with neuroscience. So it's a lot of lessons that are in my regard already things that are established for quite some time but I think if you're very novice in neuroscience or you never read anything about neuroscience this is a really good book to start because it's extremely easily written and also the things she talks about are not super hard to grasp so I personally really like chapter five and that's your brain secretly works with other brains so for example she says part of being a social species it turns out is that we regulate one another's body body Budgets. the ways in which our brains manage the bodily resources we use every day. So one of Lisa Feldman's theories is that one of the key components of our brain
brains is to manage our body budgets and this is kind of this allostasis and in, and in allostasis is defined as the process of maintaining homeostasis through the adaptive change of the organism's internal environment to meet perceived and anticipated demands. So I find this really interesting that she correlates this with other brains. I think this is a part of research a lot of us neglect that usually we see the brain in the fat so we only look at the individual and their brain and we actually don't look that much with brains surrounding these people whereas we know that brains kind of synchronize in certain matters so for example you have these mirror neurons and also with babies and mothers for example this is very strongly seen that brains kind of synchronize but it also happens on a smaller scale that the people you surround yourself influence directly your brain and your behavior and I think in the next few years we will see this a lot more that we don't only try to analyze people's brains individually but also try to connect them to other brains and actually see how the patterns link between different brains. Uh, then the third book I read was Range by David Epstein. This is more a popular neuroscience book I would say or popular psychology but I personally really um, enjoy reading these in between other more serious books or whatever. So I really liked his idea because it goes a little bit against some of advice we nowadays get. So he says to not specialize really early or to focus on a field really early but actually to try to get range. So the core idea of his book is that specialization hampers our ability to actually thrive in really difficult environments. One of the first things he starts with is the difference between a kind and a wicked learning environment. And a kind learning environment is an environment where the rules are really clear and where they usually don't change over time. So for example you can think of a chess game or the game Go or poker for example. And usually these are environments where AI systems currently do really well. So you've probably heard of AI systems beating the chess champions or beating Go champions and this is easy environments to learn with reinforcement learning. But what he actually thinks is more relevant for us humans at the moment are these wicked, he calls them, environments. So wicked environments are environments where some of the information is hidden or it could even be that if there's some kind of reward, the reward is delayed and also sometimes the feedback you get is false or not positive towards the final goal. So in general wicked environments are more difficult environments so you can think of the political climate but also at university or just in general daily living or daily human behavior is way more a wicked environment than a kind environment. And he then gives some tips or some tricks and different types of stories on how to thrive in these types of wicked environments because people usually give advice for kind environments so they say just specialize on this one thing but nowadays we see actually that hyper specialization can kind of hamper your growth so one of the things he says is to flirt with your future selves and I really love this idea it, it kind of reminded me of a video I saw called intellectually promiscuous which is one of the best two phrases combined by Ahmed El Gandour I hope I pronounced that right by Ahmed El Gandour and Ahmed El Gandour but also David Epstein they kind of say that instead of really seeing yourself as one fixed entity in time try to think of different versions of yourself or different possible futures for yourself so instead of currently I'm a researcher right but instead of saying I'm a researcher for the rest of my time maybe I could also be a teacher or right now a youtuber or instead of thinking I'm a physicist which I used to be I could also just think of myself as a broader scientist and kind of get information from all science fields and I think this idea of flirting with your possible future selves is really fun and really interesting and then one of the big advices in his books so the third thing is kind of that he says to study from different fields and I really see this in my field so my field is neuroscience and I think a lot of people think that when you study neuroscience you should have a bachelor for example in psychology or something medical but actually the people in neuroscience in my team they come from all backgrounds so they come from mathematics physics computer science biology also psychology and the medical field and all of these fields together allow us to understand the complex organ that is our brain. But if you just studied neuroscience and you only had people from neuroscience, we would have never made any 
make progress. And for example, one of the biggest things we have right now are neural networks and neural networks were inspired by neuroscience and then applied to AI. So I think if you are right now a student, I think it's good to just try to learn from a lot of fields and not to really focus on one field and make yourself really narrow. So yeah, these are three books I read these last few weeks and I really enjoyed them. So if you have some books that you would recommend for me to read next, I would love to hear that. So put that down in the comments below and otherwise see you next week. Bye!